If you were to look at those fingers on the bottom of the fence, do you see anything kind of strange or kind of unique? Hey everyone, we're going to talk about key boxes today. Well, first we're going to talk about uh, what I'm drinking because you always sound off in the comments if I don't tell you. Uh, West Cork today is the Irish whiskey. My wife and I found this when we were on our honeymoon, in fact, out in Cork. And yeah, if you've never been out yonder, I highly, highly recommend it. Get yourself out to the Dingle Peninsula if you can. But uh, you can find West Cork sometimes here in the States. And they make a few different varieties. They make a, um, you know, a black label, a green label. But the, the standard green is what I, what I go for. And it is fantastic. Mm. But less fantastic. Well, I mean, not as bad. They, these, they're interesting, right? Key boxes are always kind of, well, a crapshoot. It's hard to find really good key storage solutions. On the market, you have some, you know, high-grade rapid entry boxes that serve the first responder kind of need. Uh, obviously, Knox is the big name there. Not the only name. Uh, you see Supra, uh, especially up here in the Pacific Northwest. They have a lot of market penetration. And then on the consumer side, well, you know, you got a bunch of garbage. Uh, the entire Master Lock uh, 5400 series and similar product offerings that I and others have done videos about decoding and, and a whole bunch of other Jimmy Jam. Uh, Kitty, however, uh, which by the way, Kitty is Supra, if you don't know that. Uh, everything that's ever made under the Kitty name uh, for Lock products, they're all just rebadged Supra. Supra's the OEM on that one. This is known as the S5 series combination uh, key box. Uh, there's a little bit, again, with different model numbers, the Kitty Access Point. This is the, the 514 and the 1014. You'll see on the inside, they're almost identical mechanisms, so much so that even the, uh, you know, the parts will swap perfectly between the two of them. That's no problem at all there. But what's going on inside of these suckers? How do they work? What do they do? They, they have got a little combination going on, right? Uh, they do. They, they are a little combination dial, and internally... You just have a single locking lug that can protrude just enough that it engages with a, well, a black bar that's very, very uh, dark. Inside. Maybe we'll look at it inside the gray one, give you a little bit of a better view. There you go. So you just have a flat bar inside of there. When this protrudes upward, your door cannot pop out. It's, it's as simple as they come, right? It's, it's not a bad idea as far as products go. How do you enter the combination? If you know, it's always going to be three letters or three digits. Uh, you'd enter it just like a standard gym locker. This one is set to S. The next letter is P, so if I go P, I have to pass it once. Hit it. And the third letter is I. And here is a little tip from me to you. SPI is the default combination on every one of these that I've ever seen when I take them apart and look at the manual. So this John over here, right? Let's give it the same thing. And technically, as we're about to see when I take these apart, you should be able to dial the combination either direction. Technically, you're supposed to go clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, but let's just see it. You'll see the gates are so big, S, P. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It doesn't work on all of them. And then I. Yeah, it does work that time as well. So what's actually happening inside of these locks? What's, uh, what's the deal? Well, it's not that complicated. Oh, as, I, as, I knock, as I knock wheels off of this thing right here. Here we go. So you have a little compliant device, a little uh, bendy bendy piece of metal that's going to work as a flat spring, work as kind of a, almost like a detent, so it's very positive lock up or open. And inside of here, you just have a single piece of metal, just a piece of flat metal stock like this that's been machined. Actually, it's not metal stock. This is going to be potted metal probably that's been cast, uh, cast and kicked out. And this locking bar can either be down or up, down or up. So what allows this to drop down sometimes, but if we have the wrong combination entered. What prevents us from dropping down now? Well, as we're about to see, it's not unlike a little safe. You actually have, it's not a single fence, it is a multi-pronged fence 
that wants to drop downward into your code wheels. Uh, your code wheels that we can we can see get a look at right here. These code wheels do have gates on them. They are not fully cut through, but you can absolutely very clearly see that we do have these gates. And these are the gates into which the fence wants to drop when you're operating it. And you might notice right off the jump, right? We've got some pretty big size on those gates and it's not just, you know, one wheel. All the wheels have this same, these are all interchangeable wheels. And when you change your combination, we'll talk about that. You dump them out and re, you know, re -kajigger them. But each one of them has this really, really large pronounced gate in it. So we have our combination and I said they all have the default combination of SPI. What if we want to change that combination? Well, quickly, I'm going to go over changing the combination in case you have one of these and you're like, holy shit, mine's set to SPI. And I always thought that was unique. Uh, it's not unique. Let's, let's fix that on this one right now. Shake it if you need to. We're going to dump out. You've got three code wheels and a couple of little spacers. So inside, inside the mechanism, we can see a few things in this wheel pack. You can see there are independently operating wheels. And one wheel picks up, and then the next wheel picks up, and then the next wheel picks up. But what we want to do is get all the wheels turning in the same direction so that we know whatever we're seeing here is replicated underneath on all the wheels. They do all have the same exact kind of construction. I'm trying to give you some good lighting so you can see that. But you can see we're not perfectly aligned on these. They're not all aligned, but if I really spin them hard now, good, we're all perfectly aligned. Now, do you notice this very nicely machined and pronounced triangle, this pointer arrow? That points to whatever letter you are choosing in your combination and the letters face you. So instead of SPI, let's choose, uh, let's just, you know, go for some hacks, H-A-X, right? Well, let's find our letter H, line it up with that triangle and just drop it all the way down. Next, a little bit of a spacer gets on there. What was the next letter we said for hacks? It's gonna be an A. So let's find our letter A, okay? And we want that right on the point of that little pronounced triangle. Another spring spacer. And our final letter is going to be X for hacks. Okay, looking pretty good. And you can even see there's got a little bit of a springy action from those flat springs. All right, if we think we have it, we'll go ahead and close the door. Doesn't work right now. And of, like any safe before you ever shut the damn thing, what do you do? You test the combination. If you're a proper safe technician, you learn you test it three times before you close the door. H, A, pass it once. And then X is what we set. Will that work? Nice, good. We're not complete, uh, you know, stunads or anything. So if all you were doing was operating this, that would be the end of that, right? But is there anything we can do if you come across one of these and it's not, you know, it's not yours, it's not uh, working correctly, you know, someone says, hey, can you get into this for me? We lost our combination. Well, if it is in fact the building owner asking you that question, how would you go about trying to decode this? Let's look at those mechanisms on the inside again. And this time, let's look at it as I dial and manipulate it with the cover off. Okay, we're looking at both of these units. They are, again, they're virtually identical. The actual housings are completely identical. The only real change on the inside they made it a little bit more convenient for the users on the, uh, the Model 514. You just have these two little prongs. If you want to spring this open on the Model 1014, you got to remove two screws, but the interior, virtually the same. So here we have our code wheel, right? Here we have our parts. I manufactured this little piece earlier so that hopefully we can try to operate this and see what's going on without actually uh, having parts fly everywhere, right? So, if we open this up, we've got our wheel. So what's happening in here? We've got H. Hit the A. And we're coming around to the X. 
All right, well, that's good. We've, we've, we've entered the combination. But you can't really see very clearly what's going on because, again, these aren't... Normally on a safe wheel, you would have a cut in a, 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 a gate entirely cut through the wheel. Here we have these sort of partial gates. And with our lighting and with our angle, it's not too easy to see where those fingers are dropping in. But I will show you this. Have a look at this locking. This is the locking lug, the bolt, and the fence all in one, right? If you were to look at those fingers on the bottom of the fence, do you see anything kind of strange or kind of unique? What do you see? Yeah. One, two, and then this one right here is protruding a lot further down. The little finger on the fence that is closest to you when you're looking at it from this back side, that engages first. That one pushes down first on the code wheel before the rest of the fence touches any of the other code wheels. Why would they do that? Well, the whole idea of a what's called this is this is as far as safe locks go, this would be called a direct entry fence. Most of the time, what you could do on a lot of safes like this in, in ye olden days, you would just reef on the handle, just jam on the handle and start operating the wheel and trying to feel for spots where the lever and the fence wants to grab and jam. Now, in a perfect world, what you would have is contact with the first wheel. So you'd roll the wheels, okay, jam it on the handle, you grab the first wheel. Then you go back to the other one, you hit the next wheel on the wheel pack and it jams a little more. And you scroll and you hit the next wheel on the wheel pack and then the safe opens. What they've done by slightly elongating the last tip, the piece that engages on the final wheel, they ensure that you, if you're trying to operate this and jam on it while you're spinning the dial, they ensure that you will always jam on the outest, outermost wheel first. The last letter in the combination is what you'll jam on. Not only that, but if we look again very closely and we kind of zoom in here, you can see they put all these little extra notches. Those are false gates. Those, the whole idea is that if you're trying to manipulate this wheel by jamming on the actual bolt, trying to force it inward, you will get caught on these little false gates. Let's actually look and see what that looks like, because this is part of the process that we can use to partially decode this. So right now, if I just jam as hard as I can on the outermost, you know, on the outermost wheel, because that's what's going to hit. If I try to turn, I can't get very far. In fact, I'm just going to grab this one right here that's a little bit easier. It's all assembled. I don't have to worry about it falling apart. If I jam hard on this and I start to dial, it doesn't take more than a couple of letters of a turn before I get stuck in one of those little false notches. But there's something you can do. Look right now. I'm stuck a little bit before the K, right? Eh, 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 eh. Release. Just get yourself to the next letter. Press again. I'm stuck again. I'm stuck kind of in between N and M. Release. I'm stuck here. Now it seems like I'm not getting anything useful. Like I'm just jammed to the bejesus. I'm stuck on the R. It's like every other bloody letter. I'm never going to get around this dial. What am I going to do? I'm never going to find any useful information. Well, something interesting will happen. As you, again, look, I'm stuck just barely between A and Z. Can't move. Stuck between C and B. Remember how wide those gates were? Right now, I'm not getting stuck in any real gates. Right now, I'm just getting stuck in the false gates. But I sometimes feels really funny here. What's, what's happening? Ooh, I got stuck, I'm pressing down, but look at all this slop and play. That is because, remember, the first finger has now jammed into the real, the true gate on this wheel. So somewhere around here, I can't tell right off the hop what it is, I or H, but I know as a user, huh, I or H, something's going on here. And if I were to have been advancing the wheels from the other direction, you would actually see the same phenomenon, but the slop would be in the other direction because the, the stack of wheels behind me is biased in the other, other direction. But look, J and I, 
you can absolutely decode the last letter pretty easily on most of these key boxes. And if you know the last letter, well, sometimes that can give you, if it's the letter I, first of all, just go ahead and try that default combination a couple of times. It's probably going to still be set to SPI. And if someone asks you, hey, you know, I can't figure out my combination. I don't know what happened. You know, I inherited this box. I don't know what's going on here. Try this technique. Try jamming on the release until you come around and get stuck. Tiny notches, they won't go anywhere. But the actual last letter, if you're jamming on it, you should get a nice big amount of slop in there. And that can eliminate by one. You can sometimes, you can tell someone, hey man, uh, you know, your combination, it ended in X. Do you know, what, what might it have been set to with X? And you can say, oh, it might be hacks. It might be sex. And again, if you're out in the field, three letter words are what most people are going to choose. And finding that last letter, even though it's not really feasible to do much more of an attack, those false gates are regularly spaced. You could try to do an actual manipulate, stacking your manipulation, like set the first wheels and then all wheels left and all wheels right, and then come back to your known good number and like drop in. I'm, I wouldn't want to have to do that with one of these. But being able to at least get partway there, you never quite know because the construction otherwise, you know, th these, are, these are surprisingly robust. They, you know, they are really, real made of metal. Those wheels, they are, they are just chock full of those false gates. I might do a follow-up video later on about possible manipulation techniques or manipulation aids, but for now, if I had to have a key box outside of my house, you know, <laughs> this is the least craptastic of the consumer grade ones I've ever found. So maybe that helps you out. Maybe you like this, maybe you didn't, but we'll, we'll do some follow-up on these. I bought a few extra parts and a, a lot of extra pieces here that we can tear apart and really dig into it if you want to see it later. It, it really is. It's like a little miniature safe to the point that even they even have little flies that come around just to make sure that dialing it from one direction is the same as dialing it from the other. Uh, it is... It is more than I expected to find when I took this guy apart. So cheers to you, Supra. I'm not used to really praising things in the kitty uh, product line, but uh, yeah, it's almost like you've got this strong market share for a reason. All right, everybody, stay safe out there.